In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a blog post page just like this that shows all the blog posts on your website or a specific subset of blog posts if that's what you want. And I'm going to show you how to do this with Elementor and for free. Elementor Pro is a widget that lets you do this. Elementor Pro is paid. So we're going to use the Elementor free version plus another add-on. I'm going to show you how to create this blog post layout that you see right here. To create a blog page in Elementor, the first thing we have to do is make sure Elementor is installed. So go to your plugins, make sure Elementor is installed. You can use the free version for the purposes of this video. If you don't have Elementor installed yet, just go to add new plugin, look up Elementor, and this is the guy you want right here. Once you have that installed, we need another plugin, which is an add-on to Elementor, which has a free version that allows us to create our blog post page. So I'm going to look up the post grid, which is the name of the plugin. There's various ones that do this. I like the layout for this one the best. And like I said, the free version will do this for us. Click on install now when you're ready to install it. If you have not backed up your site yet before you're installing the plugin, it's always advised that you do so, especially for a live site. I have a tutorial in the description down below to help you do that, just in case something goes wrong. It's pretty rare something goes wrong these days, but sometimes it does. So once the plugin is installed and activated, you'll come to a page like this, which says, big red background here, to improve performance, please choose a resource load type first, otherwise all CSS and JavaScript for the shortcode and Elementor will load on your site, which can create a bad performance issues. That just means that this plugin works in two different ways. You can use a shortcode or you have an Elementor widget. If you're only going to use the Elementor widget, you can turn off the shortcode. In which case, you go to this drop down right here and say, I just want to use Elementor, and it only loads the script for the Elementor widget. I'm going to choose that and click on Save Changes. I'm not going to worry about any of the other options. I'm now going to go to Pages and Add New, and I'm going to create a page called Blog Roll or Blog Posts. This page is going to house all the blog posts on our site, so I want to name that appropriately. Going to publish it, going to then edit with Elementor, and we have the post grid widgets right up here. I'm going to choose the grid layout, and it pops in this widget, which I found has been slow to load. Sometimes I have to update and then refresh. I've only tried this on this local site, so I don't know how it would work on a different one, but it pulls in all your blog posts. Currently, we have four blog posts on this site. This one has duplicate images, which isn't great but that's not the plugin's fault, that's my fault. For the section title, I'm gonna type in here, blog posts, and it's listing all of our blog posts, and that's for free. Elementor Pro has a similar widget, but that's the Pro version you have to pay for. The free version of Elementor does not allow you to do this. That's why we had to add this add-on. So we have different layout types. We have the one that we see here, and we have layout number two, and again, I don't know if this is my computer or my local environment here, but I have to usually update this and then refresh and then the plugin drops in the widget properly and you can edit it. So you got different layout types, pick out the one you want. You can choose different column numbers. Currently it's set three, you can have one, two, three, or four columns. You can align the text left, center, or right. You can build a query and that basically means instead of showing all your blog posts, you want to show a specific subset that meets the criteria you set here. So maybe you want to show only pages, only landing pages, only products, or only posts. And you can filter by IDs of the posts and pages. If you don't know where to find those, I'll show you right now. If you go to any post or any page, this is a page right here, and you open it, this is the ID of the page right there. So anytime you go into the editor of a page or a post or any type of other post on WordPress, it could be a landing page or a WooCommerce product or something like that, you're gonna see something that says post equals or P equals, and that number is the ID. So if I were to enter that ID right here, it'll show only that post, but you probably want more posts than that. So you can add a comma and add all the IDs of posts that you want. You can also exclude posts you can limit the number of posts to show, and you can offset. So if you were to have a widget like this that shows one post at the top really big, you can then have the second widget offset so it shows every post after that, if that makes sense. Let's see if I can show you what I mean instead of saying it. So let's add another post grid here and update that and refresh. That's pretty annoying. Hopefully that's just my local, local machine. So I changed this one to just have one. One post, let's change the title to featured post, 
Let's change the column layout to one. Now you can see we have this really big featured post at the top. Then we have a blog post down below. And we set this to only show one inside of the query here. We limit it to one. It's always going to show the most recent one. So as soon as you publish a new one, that's going to pop in right here. And then this second part down here, we could call this older, older blog post. That sounds terrible. Aged, <laughs> like fine wine. Let's just call it blog posts. What the heck? This one is a featured post. This one's other blog posts. And we still have that same one at the front here. So we look up or look at the pop filter on this one and we have that same post right here. So what we want to do in the query builder for the offset, we want to have this set to number of posts to skip. So I'm going to set this to one. So it skips the first post. And now, as you can see, it has top microphones reviewed and this one's no longer down there. The one we have in the featured. So that's the purpose of the offset, at least for this use case. You have advanced filters, you can filter by category, by tags, by author, by keyword. All kinds of options. There are some pro options as well. You have to upgrade to pro for those, obviously. You can have pagination. If you have lots and lots of posts, this is something you might want to consider. You can pick the post link type, which is this link right here. So it links to the details page, which is basically the actual page of the post. The link target can be the same window or a new window. Usually when people are navigating around a site, my own site, I like to keep it at the same window. If you are linking to a site that's external to yours, like say you're linking to Wikipedia or something, I like to click on new window to have them open a new window when they visit Wikipedia. So when they close it, they still have your site open. And you can make a thumbnail link as well or not. And that's how we can create a blog post role or blog role or blog post page. There's lots of names for it on our site. So let's actually view this and see how it looks live on the front. And it looks pretty solid, I'd say. Super simple and it's free. And next up, check out this playlist right here. It's the Elementor Skills playlist on my channel where I help you level up your Elementor skills. The one down below it is the WordPress skills playlist. If you wanna really level up your skills, check out both of those. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.